You know, everybody in Jersey's got a Springsteen story. By the time Springsteen played the Stone Pony here in Asbury Park, he was pretty famous. But there was a Bruce before the pony, and that's what we're going to take a look at on today's episode. So stay tuned as we bring you back to Freehold and Bruce's roots. <laughs> Standing on the corner of Randolph and McLean where the boss got his start. Now behind me is a pretty important building. That's the Church of St. Rose of Lima. And although the boss might think he was baptized in rock and roll, was actually here at this church where he was baptized. His parents were married and he used to live right around the next block over. Now his childhood house is no longer standing, but we're going to take you to some awesome spots here in Freehold that you can still see that hold rock and roll memory. When taking your sojourn to Springsteen sites here in Freeholds, you'd be foolish not to stop at this location right here. We're at 39 and a half Institute Street. Now we're at the secret location of where the tree actually was that he photographed himself leaning against on his Born in the USA and My Hometown singles. Now the boss lived in this duplex on the left hand side, which is why it's 39 and a half, um, from the time he was six until about eighth grade. And then later on he comes back here and does a photo shoot in order to showcase the pride that he has for his hometown. Driving around the downtown Main Street of Freeholds will provide an avid Springsteen fan with a bevy of visual accompaniments to many of their favorite songs. From the CVS, which was formerly J.J. Newberry's department store on Main, where he saw his first photograph in the window listed as the hometown hero, to picking up a slice from Bruce's favorite pizza place, Federici's, or stopping by Lawyer's Title to get a peek at where a small Bruce would meet his mother, Adele, after a long day of work, ready to walk back home. Now, let's take a look at one of the last places that Springsteen lived here in Freehold. We're at 68 South Street here in Freehold, and this was the last location that the boss would live uh, with his family here in Jersey. Uh, it was at this house where Springsteen would graduate high school, and his parents decided that they were going to take a sojourn to California, leaving Bruce and two of his friends, a one Vinny Mad Dog Lopez and another Danny Federici, who you might remember from early members of the E Street Band, to live in this home. Now, there's two great stories associated with this house. The first is that it was a young Bruce Springsteen and friend Stevie Van Sant who wrote the song Pretty Flamingo after they stood and watched all the pretty girls walk by from that porch. The second story is that a deranged fan, and no it wasn't me, purchased the screen door off of 68 South Street since they felt that that was the screen door associated with the screen door slamming off of the Born to Run album. At the cross section of Center and East Main stands Freehold's Court of Honor, and it's amongst these crosses where one can come and reflect and remember those citizens from Freehold that gave the ultimate sacrifice in a time of war. Amongst these crosses is a soldier who died in Okinawa by the name of Frank Bruno. That was Bruce Springsteen's uncle, and it was through his cousin that Springsteen gained a love of music. Now, these crosses as beautiful as they are, provide the inspiration for Springsteen to write songs such as Born in the USA because he himself actually was drafted to Vietnam, but thanks to a concussion as a result of a motorcycle accident when he was 17, he was ineligible to go to war. Anybody who was anybody was rocking out at the Upstage Club, the building located behind me on that second story. Now, it was here at the Upstage that Springsteen really got his start and where he also met some of his famous friends like C.B. Van Sant, Southside Johnny Lyon, um, Gary Talent, and also David Sanctious. And the cool part about the Upstage was that unlike other bars and clubs in New Jersey, you only had to be 17 to enter. It was open all night. There was no alcohol served, but you were guaranteed to be served up an awesome time. So between the jam bands and other things that were happening, this was the spot you wanted to play at here in Asbury Park. 
We just sprung from the cages of Highway 9 to bring you to the Born to Run house. So we're located here at 7 and a half West End Court in Long Branch, New Jersey. Now Springsteen lived in this house between 1974 and 1975 and his landlord S, Marianne Rocky, tells the story of how a young Springsteen walked into her real estate office with $200 a month um, to pay for the time that he spends in the house. It was here that he wrote the entirety of the album, which should be listened from song to finish so that one can imagine a summer night here or a summer day, I should say, here in New Jersey. In addition to that, this house has a great story. So apparently Springsteen and the rest of his bandmates signed the interior of the piano in which they wrote, played out, hashed out all the songs on the album. The piano stayed in the house even after the boss had moved out. However, it was Clarence Clemens that reminded Marianne Rocky, well, you didn't get rid of the piano, did you? And after a series of renters had moved in and out, unfortunately she did. So that piano is somewhere out there as the holy relic and holy grail of Springsteen accoutrement. And if you find it, a girl needs a piano. In Belmar, New Jersey, there's a famous crossroads where 10th Avenue meets E Street. And it's here on this block that former keyboardist David Sanctius of the E Street Band used to live. So how did E Street get the name? Well, there's two very different stories, but it's still in the mystery of the band. So one story goes that uh, Springsteen comes up with the name as they're driving back. It's very early morning and he's seeing all these little white checkered post signs and he says, E Street, E Street, that sounds like a good name for a band since they need a name. Now Springsteen was in two other bands. Uh, his first band was called Child, the second band was called Steel Mill and by the time that he is rising up to fame, uh, he goes with E Street Band. The second story, which I would like to believe, is that Clarence Clemens says that the band spent so much time on E Street waiting for David Sanctious that they might as well be called it. And so you choose what story you want to listen to, but just an awesome landmark here in Belmark, New Jersey. Well, I hope you learned a little bit more about Bruce's New Jersey, the spots he grew up in, and some of his favorite haunts. And so I'm Leslie Scherenbeck. The History Chick, thanks for watching this week's episode. And in the off chance you're watching, Bruce, I have a classroom door that's always open and students that would love to rock out with you. Stay tuned for next week's episode. <laughs> There's only one boss behind this. I feel like everybody in Jersey has one, so I will tell you my Springsteen story. So I met Bruce Springsteen once when he was on Broadway, and uh, I'm going to give everybody that might be seeing Springsteen on Broadway a little tidbit tip. So I won lotto tickets to see Springsteen on Broadway the first time that it was out in November, and I read somewhere online that if you wanted to meet the boss, you had to leave the theater when he started to play Born to Run and that way you would get outside and you would be able to go online and you would get his autograph. So needless to say, I leave during Born to Run, I get up, I get out there and um, you know, his manager comes out first and then Patty, his wife comes out and finally here's my moment of zen with Bruce Springsteen and so in reference and homage to one of my favorite songs, 10th Avenue, Freeze Out, I decide that instead of asking Bruce for a selfie, I scream out, Scooter, can I get a selfie? Which was a nickname that he utilized in the song. Sure enough, he turns around and papow, takes two pictures with me. I never washed my phone again. And signed my playbill. <laughs>